Akhtol Tukvigalio from Nazarbayev University. I don't have your title of talk this page. Your talk is about evolution of star cluster form with the centrally picked star formation efficiency. You have 35 minutes for your presentation and we devoted the five minutes for question and uh, answer. Please start. Okay. So thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Bek Daulet Shukir Galiev. I'm a postdoc at Energetic Cosmos Laboratory here in Nazarbayev University. I've got my PhD from Heidelberg University in 2018. Uh, so after my PhD, uh, I got here and now I'm working also at Fesenkov Astrophysical Institute as a senior researcher. So uh, before I start, I just want to uh, make you uh, a little bit presentation about my country, about my location. So uh, I'm now at Nazarbayev University, which is located in Astana, the capital city of Kazakhstan. What you can see here in my screen, that is then the, in the center of Kazakhstan. So, uh, and another my uh, affiliation is uh, connected with Fesenkov Astrophysical Institute, which is uh, in the south of Kazakhstan. And there we have quite nice uh, instruments and observatories. So Astana is a beautiful country, beautiful city in the center of Asia, and you are all welcome to come here to visit us at Astana, which is very young and very beautiful city, as you can see here in uh, pictures. And also in this city, we have a very young university called Nazarbayev University. Our Nazarbayev University is young, but uh, also uh, at the same time very uh, uh, is one of the top universities of Kazakhstan. And since here in Astana, we have very cold winters, uh, we have this nice atrium and connected buildings. So if you visit us even in winter, you will not get cold, certainly. Uh, in, in this university, uh, we have Energetic Cosmos Laboratory, which was founded by Nobel Prize laureate George Smoot when he came to visit Kazakhstan in 2016. And since 2017, this Energetic Cosmos Laboratory is working here in three directions of uh, research, one about observations, one about instrumentation, and the uh, third part about theory, data, and computing, where I'm working uh, doing computer simulations of evolution of star clusters. So here, our team, and it's still growing. And uh, I also uh, affiliated with Fesenkov Astrophysical Institute, uh, which about I would like uh, to talk a little bit to you also. So here are the web page of our uh, institute and it has quite good uh, instrumentations. Uh, there are two observatories, one called uh, Akademishen Omarov Asiturgen Observatory, where we have uh, now even more than four telescopes there. So this is 1.5 meter telescope is the best telescope in Kazakhstan. And it is almost 3000 meters above the sea level and have very good seeing there for observers. And another observatory site is called Chanchen Observatory that where we have these two one meter telescopes. Um, so we, all you are welcome for collaboration in both my institutions. And now I would like to go to the topic which I would like to talk to you. So uh, when we talk about star clusters, uh, they have quite a complex life, which uh, I'm presenting here by this diagram. So that is, we have turbulent cold molecular clouds which can collapse and uh, form some very dense clumps, which in, uh, in order form stars there. And nowadays we know that stars do not form individually, but in clusters, they, they form in uh, large magical, uh, molecular clumps. And then they experience some uh, phase called embedded cluster, then uh, stars also can give feedback in the form of ionization, in the form of stellar wind, or uh, heating, you know, ultraviolet heating, and so on. Uh, and at the end, it can be also a supernova explosion. And that all stellar feedback will blow up gas quite quickly. And when gas is gone, it, is, uh, it might be up to 90% of total mass 
will go on with the with the gas, and uh, leftover cluster will have very weakened uh, gravitational potential, which which may which will cause violent relaxation. Uh, at the end of that cluster can uh, dissolve immediately, or uh, there will be left some bound cluster formed on bound cluster, which can lead for long term uh, evolution. So, uh, in order to study these all processes in one framework, it is quite difficult because uh, there is magnetohydrodynamics going in stars. There is um, uh, radiati radiation transfer going from as a feedback. There is winds. There is stellar dynamics of from stars. There is accretion. There is outflows from stars, and these all things are not impossible to consider in one framework. But they all connected to each other. Each step is dependent on the previous step. But, uh, but the wish is to, to, to study it as a whole thing together. So when we talk about star cluster formation, we all always think about uh, gas dynamics because it all starts from cold molecular, molecular gas. So uh, the earliest uh, studies was, uh, were from ba uh, Bait, Matthew Bait in 2000s when he tried to simulate with SPH the gas collapse and forming stars where he considered 50 solar mass gas which was very small, tiny gas, actually, and still was very computationally expensive. And nowadays, we can see a lot of uh, other simulations, as this one in the right-hand right hand side, the Starforge collaboration doing very exciting work. Uh, when they go down up to 100 uh, astronomical units resolution and form individual stars, having some feedback in, in even having jets and so on. Also, there are words to mention about other groups like uh, Torch star formation or star formation with Arepo, Smufat or Exter and so and any and many other uh, hybrid simulations. So what they are doing actually is they consider magnetohydrodynamics of cold gas collapsing into stars, fragmenting, uh, having self-gravity and so also radiation transfer and so on, and they form uh, they have they form sink particles which accrete gas, and they can bring back the gas in the form of feedback. But still, uh, when we want to understand the star formation as it is, we need to uh, consider star cluster systems, which can have masses from. Uh, few few tens of solar mass up to a million solar mass, and uh, considering such a big, uh, such a large system of star clusters, is impossible with uh, this kind of uh, simulations. So these MHD simulations are still computationally very expensive, in, even with our state of the art uh, methods and high, high performance computers. So um, what we propose is another approach to consider the star formation part of this cluster life. Here, we adopt uh, the semi-analytical model from Parmenter and Fasner to solve efficiency per free fall time in a centrally concentrated gas clump. And thus, uh, this is, since this is semi-analytic, it, it gives us the density profiles of gas and stars when you assume that star formation was gone for a given million years. And as a result, the density profile of stars in such systems will be uh, steeper compared to that of the initial or residual gas. And then, uh, as a consequence, this should give a better survivability for star clusters after gas expulsion. But then we adopt, uh, we a little bit uh, transformed this model, and uh, in 2017 we have uh, proposed a model where we assume that star clusters will form with a density profile of plumber, and then 
uh, we assume that star formation was gone for a given million years, and then we recover what was the initial or what is the residual uh, density, residual gas density profile at that time. So here, in this plot, you see the density profiles of star cluster in uh, embedded star cluster in this black dashed line, and different color lines uh, are showing the density profile of residual gas for a given star formation efficiency. And then we assume that this kind of system is in variable equilibrium within the total potential, uh, gravitational potential, and then for simplicity, we assume the uh, instantaneous gas expulsion. And then we look how this kind of clusters can survive. So this is very important because in this case, we also take into account the formation. Uh, it can mimic uh, up to some uh, part, some details. And also, even in this detailed hydrodynamical simulations, the velocity distribution of stars is still uh, one of the unresolved problems. And here, assuming this a variable equilibrium in between, uh, together with gas, is some kind of, uh, how to say, uh, one possible solution, I would say. And with this model, we then uh, remove the gas instantaneously, because that is the most uh, harsh uh, process, what can happen to the cluster, because if the gas explosion would go uh, slower than instantaneous, then uh, of course, star cluster would uh, able to survive with higher mass fraction. But uh, we wanted to make uh, the, un uh, the lower limit for that, and then looked at the bound mass fraction, which can star cluster keep after gas expulsion and subsequent violent relaxation. In this plot, we show the bound mass fraction, which is the fraction of stellar mass st kept bound to the cluster after violent relaxation as a function of global star formation efficiency. So by the global star formation efficiency, we mean the fraction of gas mass converted into stars. And here, as you can see this with the uh, red crosses, with our Hammer model profile, we obtained that uh, star formation efficiency of 15% is enough to survive as a star cluster after instantaneous gas expulsion. So, which was also, uh, which is also um, in agreement with the observations of star formation efficiencies uh, estimated from the nearby star forming regions, which is varying up to 30%, and mostly they are lower than 20%. So, in this case, we kind of saw the problem of infant mortality of star clusters, that not all star clusters, not, not the majority of star clusters, would dissolve right after uh, formation. So, uh, and then we had an idea that actually plumber profile is quite steep for star forming regions, and maybe we need to try something a little bit shallower profile to match the uh, more realistic case. And then we tried the family of Denon models and versus Plummer models. So here, with Denon models, we have the outer uh, Paolo profile of the density profile uh, with index of minus four. And in that case, the gas density profile, which should form such a cluster, according to the local density-driven cluster formation model of Parmenter and Pleasant 2013, would be about uh, would have an uh, index of power law index of about 2.6, which is uh, somewhat closer to that of either thermal spheres. And then we checked how such clusters can uh, survive after gas explosion. And also as an option from Denon models uh, family, we tried clusters formed with the central uh, cusps. So. Uh, and whether that will uh, have some impact. As a result, with our new models, with Denon profile, uh, we have improved the survivability of star clusters when uh, our model clusters could survive with even low star formation efficiency as about 3%. So now, uh, when, the sh when we adopt shallower density profile, our models can survive with very low star formation efficiencies as 
And just for comparison, here in the right-hand side, uh, we showed the distribution of star formation efficiencies from nearby 32 star forming regions from early in 2011. And here, as you can see previously, our uh, limit was 15% when we just had a few clouds, few star forming regions predicted to have month cluster. But now with Denon model approach, we can see we can say that uh, another 66% of this uh, clumps are uh, might be able to leave bound cluster at the uh, after violent relaxation after uh, gas expulsion. So then uh, we didn't also uh, stop only here, and we wanted to try how such model clusters would uh, evolve, would survive in different galactic environments. That is very important to study the star formation history over galaxy. So then we, de we decided to vary uh, the so-called lambda parameter, which is the impact of the galactic tidal field. And here we can uh, we may measure the impact of the galactic tidal field by the ratio of half mass radius to the Jacobi radius. And this parameter can be varied in two ways. One is that we bring the cluster closer to the galactic center. Here in the left-hand side, we see the rotation velocity uh, of the galaxy and each point is the uh, position of our model clusters for example uh, and bringing the cluster closer to the central center of galaxy we will increase the impact of the galactic tidal field or uh, getting to the outer part of the galaxy we will decrease the impact of the galactic tidal field that is we vary the Jacobi radius of the cluster on the other hand we can keep our cluster in, uh, in the solar neighborhood, for example, but then we change the half mass radius, for example, here, and uh, making the cluster more compact, we will uh, decrease the impact of the galactic tidal field and vice versa. Studying such uh, different models, uh, we have found that uh, for our models, in the scope of our uh, paper that uh, in 2019, uh, we varied the lambda parameter from uh, 3% to 10%. And for such clusters, the galactic tidal field almost have no impact during the violent relaxation and the bound mass fraction, which is on the y-axis here, uh, for a given star formation efficiency would be almost the same. Although there are some, uh, so on the left-hand side, when we vary the Jacobi radius, that we bring the same cluster closer or outer from the galactic center. On the right-hand side, we make the cluster more compact or uh, more diffuse to the right. So, uh, and uh, these solid lines are from the earlier studies from Baumgarten Krupa in 2007, when they, comp uh, when they considered star clusters uh, formed in the plumber sphere gas uh, with this when when the cluster in gas have the same density profiles so then uh, it's also interesting how these clusters would evolve further uh, how they will dissolve actually so there is uh, there was a study in uh, early 2006 when uh, people tried to measure the density, the dissolution time for star clusters. And uh, Butlukus and Lammers made an analytical uh, model and then when uh, they compared with the, uh, the observed dissolution time uh, for star clusters around our solar neighborhood uh, to the and body models of uh, Baumgart and Makino in 2003. Uh, there was a mismatch that end body models were surviving longer than the real clusters around, the, around our sun. And at that time, the Lammers and Gillis and Gillis et al. proposed a model when they assumed that maybe encounters with uh, giant molecular clouds will uh, shorten the life of the star, of star clusters. 
And in, 2000, in 2015, uh, another group of authors, uh, lead by, led by uh, Andreas Ernst, uh, considered model uh, and body models, starting with uh, initially Jacob uh, overfill at the Roche flow. So they have considered some star clusters which initially overfill their Jacobi radius. And they found that this can also shorten the life of star clusters for a higher masses and even le leading to the uh, mass independent dissolution. Although uh, the model they considered was uh, a little bit unrealistic in, in case that uh, their clusters were already in barrel equilibrium with itself and overfilling the Jacobi radius. However, um, the argument why they could happen at so was that they could have larger Jacobi radius when they formed and then when they low, uh, when the, uh, after gas expulsion, when the gas is gone, the actual Jacobi radius can shrink and then faster might become overfilling. However, if such process will happen, the cluster cannot be in real equilibrium and should be uh, should uh, experience final relaxation. What we actually uh, consider with our models. And then for our models, we have done uh, simulations with different masses, for different masses starting from a uh, few hundreds to few ten thousands up to 100,000 solar mass with different star formation efficiencies. And what we have found actually is that our model clusters with low star formation efficiencies for different masses are somehow mimic the um, behavior in, in this dissolution time versus uh, initial mass. Uh, the same uh, dissolution time as was observed for the solar neighborhood, that is about, uh, that's about a billion year for 10 to 4 solar mass cluster. So then we uh, propose that probably not only GMC encounter will shorten the cluster life, but also uh, their initial star formation efficiency can uh, help them to dissolve faster uh, than we would assume uh, with uh, initially with, with the models initially in their labor. So that was some uh, alternative solution for this. And uh, this all was uh, done for a given environment in, uh, for that clusters are with the same lambda. And then now we try uh, our models with different lambdas. So that is here in, uh, in the right hand side, we have uh, model clusters with different masses for uh, three different lambdas. So here, 15%, 10%, 5%, 10%, 15%. And here the letter I or S means that I is the, we, we change our lambda, bringing our clusters closer to the galactic center, uh, just increasing it. Or we can make our cluster uh, more diffuse, increasing the half mass radius, and so also increase the lambda. So for a given lambda, we have different color uh, models here, and uh, different symbol shapes are show the different star formation efficiencies. So here we can see that uh, our model clusters follow some uh, very interesting trends that even uh, star clusters with very different masses, uh, order of two uh, difference, can dissolve at the same dissolution time. And then uh, in order to understand here in this plot, we took the model clusters with a given star formation efficiency, that is 17%, which uh, this, these models are most uh, resemble the open cluster profiles in our case, having very uh, large lambda after violent relaxation. And uh, here we took uh, two models one starting with 6,000 solar mass at the beginning, and one is with starting with 60,000 solar mass before gas expulsion. 
and then resulting at different masses uh, and resulting in different dissolution times. So, um, and we have found that this alpha, uh, the, the slow in dissolution time, also depends on uh, initial lambda of star uh, of our model class. So it depends also on star formation efficiency. It depends also on the initial initial impact of the galactic tidal field. When the star cluster with the lowest impact of the galactic tidal field with the lowest um, lambda uh, can have this high steep as high as 0.6, which has been also found for uh, previous um, models, previous models, uh, which also are starting from init uh, initially very equilibrium with clusters initially in very equilibrium. And, but when we have a higher impact from the galactic tidal field, this uh, slope goes down up to 1.0.1 and shows us some uh, channels for uh, mass independent uh, dissolution case. So then uh, we put here. as a function of lambda. To the, to the left, we are changing the Jacobi radius. To the right, we are changing the half mass radius. And uh, a given uh, symbol means uh, given star formation efficiency. For example, these triangles are 15% star formation efficiency, while the down triangles are highest star formation efficiency, 25. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately for our uh, the, the most compact clusters, we still are running these high star formation efficiency models uh, for the highest mass. Therefore, we couldn't obtain the uh, slopes for them. Although you can see that uh, they might be very high, and we have some uh, trend in uh, depending on lambda. Uh, so yeah, uh, the dissolution time of star clusters. Uh, also depend on star formation efficiency and the initial impact from the galactic tidal field. That means if the cluster uh, is in closer to the galactic center and having uh, the same density as those which are in the outskirts, they would be destroyed faster. And in order to stay for longer, the, these clusters need to be more compact than their uh, counterparts in the outer galaxy. On the other hand, in the outer galaxy, star clusters can still survive um, with uh, uh, for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as a conclusion here, I would like to say that our new models, uh, considering the central epic star formation efficiency allow star clusters to survive with a very low star formation efficiency. In case of DNN models, it can be go down as few percent, as 3% or so. And uh, these models, starting with uh, gas expulsion and vinyl relaxation, also can uh, explain the short dissolution time for uh, open clusters around the solar neighborhood, meaning that they might be formed with a low star formation efficiencies. And if they experience the gas expulsion, uh, they will uh, live uh, no so long, even if they are very uh, massive. And also, uh, if star clusters will form with a high galactic impact, the galact impact of the galactic tidal field, that can also lead to the mass independent dissolution in such galaxies. So that's all uh, for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you for finishing your talk on time. We have time for one or two questions, please. So same this. Thank you, Dr. Ole, for a very nice talk and also for accepting Asia.
see you maybe next time personally. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Thank you also. Yeah. Uh, my question is about star formation efficiency, the value of star formation efficiency that you use in your simulation. I see you use 0. Point, less than 0. 0.2. Is it motivated by the observation? Just you, you want to see the impact of this one? Because as far as I know, um, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.4 is a reasonable value for this parameter. Yeah, but uh, this is indeed inspired by observations. Uh, when you look at the uh, star formation efficiencies estimated from observations, they mostly below 30%. And uh, it is very crucial to understand how this kind of low star formation efficiency clusters can survive after that. And also, uh, this might be a channel to form uh, open clusters, which we observe today uh, quite numerous around our sun. And while the high star formation efficiency uh, case would be some channel to form globular clusters, for example. Thank and you. Also, and also, like uh, from uh, state of the art MHD combined with n body simulations, we can see that the stellar feedback coming from massive stars are quite um, strong and they can blow up the gas very soon within a million year uh, so that's uh, finishing the star formation there and that brings also to the very low star formation efficiency in the molecular cloud itself and then again we need to understand how such clusters can survive if they will lose a lot of mass from the uh, embedded cluster so that was uh, my kind of inspiration for this work Okay, the next question. Okay, please once again encourage the speaker back to it. Thank you. Very much.